Got it. <laughs> Marissa, Nick got it, so we should be good. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, let's go on there. All right, everyone, we're going to give everyone a few minutes or one minute here to to uh, to get everyone else in and we're going to get rolling. I want to be quick on this meeting just because I want to be respectful of your time in the middle of the day here and and capitalize a little bit on the potential lunch time uh, that you have. So I'm going to give about another 30 seconds for Marissa to continue to, to add anyone in that's, that pops in and then we'll get rolling. Nick Rizzo, you want to unmute real quick and just make sure I got you? Yep, I'm here. Beautiful, perfect. All right, let's uh, let's get rolling on this thing, gang. Congratulations on advancing to the state women dive meet. It's been kind of a wild, uh, gosh, I think everyone lumps everything into a couple of years here when you're talking about our experience as athletic administrators and coaches, uh, but it has been wild and I'm excited to, to get underway with our winter tournament. So uh, congratulations on making it here and advancing through the section meets that you've had and, uh, and advancing through um, you know, some tough circumstances in, in regular season with weather and all the stuff that we've been going on. So excited to have you here, excited to get going. Um, go ahead, Marissa. Um, my name is Phil Archer. For any of you that I have not met, uh, I'm the associate, uh, associate director that's in charge of boys and girls swimming here, and hence I will be um, running your meeting here. So uh, I'm going to introduce real quick our tournament management team, uh, starting with myself, as, as I just uh, introduced. Chris Arseth is our tournament manager. Many of you are familiar with him, uh, a longtime swim and dive coach um, out of Minneapolis and has been doing a phenomenal job running our tournament for years. Uh, Jim Marshall on the call here. I saw Jim on here as our official supervisor. Uh, Jim has been uh, working in officiating and, um, and uh, with officials in swim for a long time. And quite frankly, I go to him with most of my questions anyways. So if you ask me a question, I usually ask Jim or Chris and, and uh, just because diving is not my, was not my primary sport. So we also have Nick Rizzo from Hometown Ticketing. Um, Hometown will be providing all of our online ticketing services. And Nick will have a few minutes to share with you on some of our ticketing processes. Uh, Laura McIntoon from the league office here. Uh, who does everything tech and more with us. Uh, and she'll be tossing some stuff in there on the website. Uh, Tim Layton is not with us today to my understanding, uh, but Tim takes care of all of our media and um, any, any media credentials go through him and his office. And uh, Laura and I will touch on his pieces uh, as far as the information coming over to you guys. Uh, Linda McKee and Katie Davis are our, our University of Minnesota staff that work with us out of the Aquatic Center. Uh, they've been phenomenal for, for us for a long time, and we're excited to work with them. And, and then last and not least, uh, Marissa Annitzberger, who is our new support staff here at the MSHSL, it will be uh, the new support staff also working with boys and girls swimming and diving. So welcome her on her first tournament. Uh, we're excited to get some things going and, and kind of uh, – um, you know, just kind of we're ripping the Band-Aid off and she's getting a tournament within her first couple of months of uh, being an employee here. So uh, this is your tournament staff for the most part. Um, hopefully everyone's got their camera on. You're able to put a face with a name in case there is a question or a need while we're in venue. Let's go ahead, Marissa. All right. So real quick purpose on this presentation, I'm going to do my best to not go off the slides. Uh, so that if you need to reference something or come back, you can pretty much use the verbiage that's on these slides. So you don't need to go through the recording that will be posted along with this slideshow. You can just use the slides to scroll through those. 
and uh, and get the answers that you need. Or if your coach isn't able to be on because they're at work or if you're viewing this later on, my verbiage is going to match up as closely as I can to the slides starting now. So anyways, uh, the highlight, the highlight and review tournament information to help ensure a positive tournament experience for your coaches, spectators, and most of all your student athletes. Uh, every head coach is required to, re to review this presentation. So if your coach is not on here, make sure that they are getting access to this through their coach's dashboard or into their tournament resources. Um, and then also review all this information with other pieces of your coaching staff, the other coaches, not just your head coach. Go ahead, Marissa. All right, so our state tournament website. I'd like to let Laura hop in here for a quick second and just talk a little bit about some of the resources on the, on the MSHSL.org site. Great, thanks, Phil. As we all know, there are just a lot of resources to keep organized for all aspects of our life. You will see a number of emails coming primarily from Marissa that will have a number of attachments on them. But please know that everything that she is sending out to you is also placed on your dashboard. So when you want to find everything that has been sent or you can't find a document or you just want to make sure you have all your bases covered, you'll find those on your dashboard. ADs and coaches, you both have a blue box that looks much like number one. The wording is a little bit different for each of you, but you're looking for that blue box. When you click that sports and activities, ADs, you're going to see a long list of activities because you will see every activity in your school. Coaches, you will see just the activities and sports that you coach. Behind that, you'll find that band that says swimming and diving boys. You see my example here is left over from last spring with girls golf. And behind that band, when you click the little plus, you will see two or probably even three sections. You'll see one that's activity resources, which are those year-long resources. Many of you will see some section things in there that your section management folks added for you. And then over on the right side, you'll find state tournament resources. And again, our goal as a staff is to have everything that you need to plan your trip to the state tournament located in that area. And again, this is only coaches and ADs that see this information. This is really meant for you not for the public. So again, if there's something that you expect to have there, um, we're working with um, two new folks, Phil and Marissa have not done boys swimming before. So if there's something that in the past used to always be available to you, um, please give us a quick shout out and help us make that the best spot it can be for you. Phil, I'll turn it back to you. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. I appreciate that. Um, Let's go ahead and move forward. Thanks, Marissa. All right, so tournament date and schedule. Nothing has changed. We're on our Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, with diving prelims on Thursday with a class A at noon and double A at six. Um, same is gonna hold true on the swimming prelims the following day. And um, on our finals, we've got a noon and a six as well for A and double A. And this is underneath your tournament resources. Okay, Marissa. All right, our entry forms. So. A um, couple of things here. The, they will be used to admit athletes to the aquatic center. So if, they, if they're on your roster or they're an alternate, make sure that they are on this sheet. So they've got to be in by today at four o'clock. We've received a good number of them um, and uh, you guys have done a great job so far of getting them in. Uh, the link to the form, if for whatever reason you haven't submitted it or you're having some, some issues, it is on your dashboard underneath those state tournament resources um, using the process that Laura just described on getting to that swim and dive boys accordion. Um, it'll pop down and that will actually be the second uh, resource there for you. So if you have not submitted that, please do so immediately. Uh, and again, only the athletes on this list will be, um, will, will be admitted uh, and are eligible for competition. One quick thing I want to, I want to note: we have received um, almost all of these, but I just want to want to say, on the, the original entry form that went out, there was a hyperlink to Lisa Lissamore's old email, uh, but it had Marissa's email stated on there. Um, and so I, I, we are gonna reach out to anyone that we don't have on, but if you wouldn't mind just double checking your form that you sent in and make sure it went to the Marissa uh, M. Annitzberger email versus Lisa Lissamore's, uh, we'll be all good. Again, we're gonna do everything we can on our part to make sure that no one is missed 
and we'll knock that all out in a timely fashion. But if you do have a second over lunch or whatever, or you're multitasking and you can see if it was sent to M. Ennisberger versus L. Lissamore, that would be extremely helpful. So, um, so that's one little quick note there. And, and uh, some of your coaches were looking for this form uh, on Friday and Saturday, and it was not up on the site. It was up on. It was not up on the site because we were making a quick adjustment for it, uh, which I'll hop into a little bit later in the next slide or so. But um, but it is up there now, and it was also emailed out yesterday to everyone to have. So also a quick note on indicating your relay alternates. If they are going to participate in the event, put them on the sheet um, as an alternate. Um, don't list one alternate and you can have two and then you want to add the second one later. Go ahead and add them now. All right. Go ahead, Marissa. All right. That was for swim. These are our dive sheets. All right. The dive sheets uh, have to be in by this evening at 10 p.m. And uh, the e-dive info right there is below. It's uh, some people get hung, hung, excuse me, a little hung up on it. But if you go down to the bottom and under resources there, you'll see the online registrations. Chris, do you have anything that you want to throw in there on the on the submission of the e-dive? No, so, just uh, make sure that you have those in today. You're able to make changes um, at the site if you have a diving dive uh, change. And then um, you're, you're not required to purchase anything. Just click the email entries uh, button there below that is circled. Awesome. Okay. So... Deadline and procedures for submitting dive sheets. Um, Chris went over that just a little bit there, but um, the host, the meet host is the MPLS swim, which is Chris's email, and then label class A state meet or class AA state meet. Um, and then you will be allowed, uh, excuse me, diving coaches will be allowed on the pool deck only if you have divers qualified in the meet. Just a little bullet note there. Go ahead. Okay, speaking of being on the pool deck, coaches education requirements. Um, these need to be completed. They should have been completed at your section meet and you should not have been allowed on deck at the section meet uh, if they were not. But for the state meet, um, once we receive your entry form, Marissa actually checks all of the coaches, uh, old coaches clipboard, now current dashboard on all of the continuing education requirements. If those are not complete, you cannot be on deck. Um, so what you want to do as an AD or a head coach is make sure that your staff is taken care of on uh, making sure that all of those CERs are knocked out so that there's no issues when we come in and check in. If, if you have a coach that's on your event sheet or your roster, excuse me, uh, down at the pass gate, they will not be let in. And we'll do our best to catch it and send you a note. But if you could do that in advance, that would be extremely helpful for us uh, so that we don't congest the pass gate. Go ahead. All right, so our ticket allotment, hopping into getting into the actual uh, venue here. So each participating school receives 15 tickets for each qualifying relay team and three tickets for each individual qualifying um, diver swimmer. So one relay team equals 15, 2, 30, 3, 45, you get the gist of it. Um, schools without relay entries are allotted three tickets per individual qualifier and ticket allotments um, are based on section results and seats are assigned on a rotating schedule. Go ahead. So our timeline for our tickets, right? Today, Monday, the 27th, schools will receive a list of passcodes uh, for each ticket that they are allotted. So if I was at Creighton Durham Hall before, Creighton Durham Hall had one relay team, we would receive uh, tickets for, or we would receive passcodes for 15 of those tickets. Okay, well, we get those passcodes today. Marissa, when do you have it to go out? Right after the meeting's done? Perfect. So those will go out as soon as our meeting is completed. You'll receive an email with the list of passcodes for the allotted tickets that you were, were given for your school. Tomorrow, February 28th, all swim passcoded tickets will go on sale at 8 a.m. along with the diving prelim tickets. Uh, there's no passcode needed for the diving prelim tickets, but at 8 a.m., the swim passcode tickets will go on sale as well. All right, Wednesday, March 1st, all pass-coded swim prelim tickets for swim and dive prelims and, excuse me, swim prelims and swim and dive finals will expire at 8 a.m. This is Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. So your ticket codes are good for essentially 24 hours. Tuesday morning to Wednesday morning is when you'll have exclusive access. Your communities will have exclusive access in your sections to use those passcodes. 
on Wednesday, excuse me, at noon on Wednesday, then we will open up a general seating. It's not general admission. There's still assigned seats, but any, any seats that were not purchased that were assigned passcoded seats, any of those seats that were not purchased will now be available to anyone to purchase. Um, and we do this so that if, if you don't like the section that your team was uh, or your school was selected for, um, like the seating section, well, there's people that can go out and they can, they can purchase tickets or seats in other areas if they so choose. And you have to wait until Wednesday, March 1st to do that, or excuse me, March 1st at noon to do that. All right, ticket cost and payment ticket codes uh, are gonna be emailed to the AD and the coach after this meeting. It's their responsibility to distribute those ticket codes to parents or other stakeholders in your communities. Um, please read the directions that come out with that carefully. We'll actually elaborate a little bit on that here um, with Nick from hometown in a few minutes, but the prices are $9 for the prelim, diving prelims, the swimming prelims and swim and dive finals are gonna be $12 per session. Um, there's no, no student ticket price, the U of M's pretty straightforward uh, and it's been working well in the past and we'll continue to do so. Go ahead, Marissa. All right, so each code will unlock a single ticket for your school's designated single seating area. So the codes will be good for both swimming prelims on Friday and swimming and diving finals on Saturday. So basically that means that each code can be used to purchase, uh, purchase twice, once per day, right? The code's good for one seat, but it can be purchased for the two different days of the event, okay? Now, how you assign those codes are up to you and your community, but your allotted ticket amount is represented by the number of codes that you receive. So again, if Creed Nairam Hall had 15 tickets, we receive 15 codes and they'll be good to use for the swimming prelims and the swimming and diving finals on Saturday. Go ahead. All right, other ticket policies. There's no will call service for tickets. Um, class A student participa participants are required to purchase tickets for the class 2A competitions and vice versa if they wanna go to them. Again, seating at the U is a, is a prime and, um, and it's, gonna, it's very challenging to let students come and go as we would in some of our other events like a basketball or a volleyball or something like that because of the, the tight space. So everyone must have a ticket except for children who have not had their second birthday yet. Uh, and then there's no passes or comp tickets uh, for this event. Now, this is one note. Now, this is why we didn't have the, uh, the um, entry form up on the, up on the website on Friday night like it normally was in the past. We are making an adjustment here and we're gonna try something new uh, for this winter's uh, boys tournament, boys mat, or meet, excuse me. So ADs or an administrative rep will be admitted at the south entrance, right? So if, if anyone is used to filling out that entry form, notice there's a third line at the top of it that says athletic director or administrative rep and then days in which you plan on coming, okay, or position. And so uh, with that being said, um, athletic directors were never allowed to come in without a ticket for swim and dive because again, space is at a premium and uh, that's, that's never happened before. Uh, one of the things that I got as feedback coming into the position was, was finding a way to work around that. And there's a lot of standing room at times at the, uh, at the, uh, the boys and girls swimming and diving meet. So what we've done is we've taken that standing room now, knowing that you as athletic directors are coming to watch special specific events or specific kids or teams are coming just for the award ceremony. And so we're working things out so that we can make you guys get in there, or let you guys get in there, uh, support your communities, support us by having a leadership um, position there along with your communities and, um, and supporting the event. So uh, with that being said, the check-in is gonna be at the south entrance. So that's the opposite of the university entrance there. And so what we're asking is that you bring um, either your tournament pass that you have purchased from the MSHSL. And now I understand it. the tournament pass says does not work for boys, boys and girls hockey and boys and girls swimming and diving. I understand that. This is, we're exploring this right now. We're trying to get it set up long-term. So please, if you've got your tournament pass, please bring that and present that at the South entry to the U of M's aquatic center. And you'll proceed to the South ticket booth there where you'll be checked in. Um, so we know who's there and who's taking advantage of this and, and just to kind of have some tracking on what we're doing. 
Okay, so uh, if for whatever reason you're going to send an administrative rep that is not you as an AD or your assistant AD that might have the state tournament pass from the MSHSL, please have them bring their uh, school ID or badge that labels them as an administrator for your school, and we will we will have them on that list as well because they should be on your on your event um, your entry form. Excuse me. Uh, and then we'll check them off and mark them as there as well. So this is very similar to uh, some of our other tournaments where you check in at the headquarters as the administrative rep and um, connect with the tournament staff so that we know if there's an issue or something that happens within you know, your community or your spectators, we can go to you for support and assistance or maybe just information. So uh, that's a big change for this year and uh, we're gonna see how it goes. So uh, this is all exploratory, so I say roll with me on it. So uh, moving forward, General admission for diving prelims, uh, tickets for diving prelims will be sold on Tuesday, February 28th, starting at 8 a.m. We, we talked about that already. Uh, reserve seating for swimming prelims and swimming diving for finals. This is what we talked about. So now I'm going to go ahead and we can move forward one, Marissa. All right. So I'd like to introduce Nick Rizzo, who is our representative from Hometown Ticking, Ticketing, to come in and talk a little bit about the process of purchasing tickets uh, you, utilizing the passcode. Now, and I see that there's some, some questions that have popped up in the chat and we'll address those uh, as we get to the end of it, um, end of our, our presentation here. But I wanna um, make sure that we can get through some things and then anyone that wants to hang on or has the extra time to hang on for those questions, we'll go ahead and address those at that time. But right now, let's go ahead and bring in Nick. Nick, we wanna unmute and, um, and take your couple of slides here. Thanks, Phil. It's, uh, it's a pleasure being with everyone today. Like Phil said, I just kind of want to give you a rundown on what the process will be for your fans. So after you divvy up those tickets, however you want in those codes, each code is worth one ticket. So I'll go to the ticket page for MSHSL. Um, there you go. Um, and you will select either the prelim or the finals. So the code, like Phil said, is worth a one ticket in both events. Now they do have to be purchased separately. So these are kind of the step by steps here. So you select either the single A or the double A prelim or final. You hit find seats and then you enter your code. This will unlock a section in the seat map in your school's color. You may have one or two colors, um, one for, I try to do the same for both diving and swimming, but with that diving section, sometimes there's a second color. So you're gonna see a few seats unlocked and those are what you can purchase from. Um, so you have to select one seat at a time and then go through the purchase process. Um, you'll have to repeat this step for every code you have and then for every event you have or you buy. So if I want to buy three tickets for the prelims and three tickets for the finals, I'm going to have to have six separate transactions. Uh, one, three for the prelims and three for the finals. And I will use a total of three codes. Go to the next slide. Um, there is a video here for you guys. Um, it will be in this. Uh, PowerPoint when they when they share it and also in your coach's dashboard, I believe um, it's it's a quick it's a quick two minute video. It shows exactly what I just spoke on. So you can share that with your with your parents and they can see exactly how to go purchase tickets. Um, I, I highly recommend you do that. Um, and you can go to the next slide here. Um, the tickets can come in any certain of these ways. Um, so you can see our we have the fan app there if you want to download it. But once I buy a ticket, I can print out that ticket. So it's on an eight by 11 sheet of paper. I can show the ticket on my smartphone through the fan app. Um, so that's what I have linked down there below that gray H. Um, so they could also save that to their Apple or Google wallet. So that's within the fan app. They can save their tickets or they can just save that email that the tickets come to and then open up the PDF attached to it and just show you on their phone. So those are kind of the ways that um, the parents can present or families or whoever has tickets can present their tickets at the gate to be scanned. And then the next one, um, if your fans have any questions, this is where they should reach out to. So we have the fan support number and the fan support email there. Um, please have them reach out. We have a dedicated support team to answer any of their questions of, hey, Whatever the question is, if they have a question, they can go to these numbers. Um, we can walk them through step-by-step step on how to purchase. And if they have any issues, we can help resolve those. If your fans do have issues that our support staff cannot handle, 
or they can't figure out, they will contact me, our support staff will, and I'll be able to walk them through how to help your fans. So on the next slide, I have my information. You guys feel free to use this as coaches and ADs. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer any, but please don't share this with your communities. Um, don't want everyone shooting me a text of why they can't find. That's what our fan support is for. But if you guys have any questions or need any help, let me know or Phil or Marissa and we can get, get you helped. Um, yeah, Thank, back to you, Phil. Good deal. Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, <clears throat> this, this is the deal, gang. We've, we've had a really good experience with hometown ticketing. Um, their, their customer support has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, from, from all reports that I've got of anyone that has needed support from them, uh, they've done a great job of that. And, and as we've cleaned this process up, um, it's gotten smoother and smoother, and people have, have come known what to expect as far as purchasing their tickets, navigating the sites, navigating the entry and all those different things. And it has gotten uh, to be a pretty good experience uh, from from a lot of the feedback that I've received. So I appreciate Nick's, um, Nick's uh, comments on that, and I appreciate the support from their staff. So um, let's go ahead and, and move into spectator seating. Um, the U of M Aquatic Center is broken down into north and south. Uh, bleachers and there's north and south entry entrances that uh, that go along with those. So um, spectator seating is restricted to the spectator gallery. Uh, spectators will not be allowed down on the pool deck. And um, the the very I, I think obvious things: lawn chairs are not permitted, balloons, noisemakers, confettis, things along those lines. Go ahead, Marissa. All right, now our team entrances. Let's hop into some of the, the logistics of this. Coaches and athletes must use the north side landing entrance at all times to access the pool deck. That is where our pass gate's at. That's where those doors are. Uh, for you that do not know that that's on the north side of, of the university, uh, university Avenue and that university parking ramp that's right there. Uh, you can't really access that from the south. So your buses need to drop off on the north side there. And most of your drivers already are, are fully aware of this and understand this stuff. Um, but, uh, but that north entry there is where you'll have to come in and that's where the pass gate is at. That's where they will check in. Go ahead. Okay, so our pass gate and registration. So team registration of the daily check-in will be set on that north landing as we just spoke about. Um, the, coach, the, the coach must report to those pickup times and get their packet um at at their sections assigned time so if you've got those there uh, we also have those in the participants guide that were sent out um and those are your times that you can check in chris you have anything that you want to toss in on their check-in times and and kind of the uh the logistics of the pass gate there sure uh just make sure you know we've got some really um tight spatial issues there in that in that uh, stairwell so just make sure that you're being uh, very courteous to our staff that we have down at the bottom of the, the, the stairwell. They're doing the best that they can to check in. And then also, um, you know, be courteous to your, the other teams and coaches that are there. And please do not try to come down onto the deck if, if it is not your time to, uh, to check in or to show up for your practice or anything like that. So that's all that I've got. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing on that, thanks, Chris. The biggest thing on that is this. Um, if, if you're a coach on this call or you're an AD relaying this to a coach later on, um, more is caught than taught. Set a good example. And, um, you know, it, there's going to be frustrations. There's going to be some times where it might be backed up or whatever. Um, set a good example for your program and your kids by what you're doing and how you're interacting with those folks at the pass gate or other coaches and things like that. So um, I think that's a, that's a big aspect of our educationally based athletics. And um, it's some of those frustrating times where we get the opportunity to model that for our kids. Go ahead, Marissa. All right, admittance procedures. All right, during Thursday's practice, league officials will stamp the hand of each coach, contestant, and relay alternate. Hand stamps allow individuals to enter the facility and access the pool deck and locker rooms during their respective meet times. Um, coaches and athletes without a hand stamp will be denied admittance. Um, so a couple quick notes here. Uh, the normal MSHSL rules, no one is allowed on deck uh, that's at least not in the seventh grade. Uh, and this applies to pre-meet, practice, um, competition, the whole nine. So seventh grade and above, um, there are no student managers allowed. No student managers allowed. Go ahead. 
So our practice schedule is posted on the dashboard. It's located on the website underneath the boys swimming and diving activities page. Um, practice sessions are closed to the public. Only coaches and athletes with a handstand will be allowed um, in the aquatic center during those practice sessions. All right, and our deck seating assignment. So coaches and swimmers with uh, and divers will be allowed to sit on the bleachers that, that uh, are on the pool deck. They line the north and the south sides of the aquatic center there. Um, so you'll have your respective class during the time of your meet. So class A can't stay and hang out during the 2A meet and vice versa there. Uh, but we've got your section assignments here, your seating assignments here per section on either the north or the south bleachers respectively uh, for both classes there. All right, locker room assignments. Um, we've got your locker room space is on the west end of the pool deck, right where you enter uh, from that north landing door. Um, so classes seated on the north side of the bleachers will go to the north locker room, and the team seated on the south side of the bleachers will go to the south locker rooms. Many of you have done this before, but just clarifying if there's any new, any new uh, programs here or any new coaches, um, just go to the locker rooms that are on the, the bleachers that you're assigned to. All right, some notes on locker room facilities. Lockers are available for student participants. All participants must bring their own padlock and towel. They must bring their own padlock and towel. Each participant will be responsible for securing their own valuables. Um, and so just have, have that, normal, that normal talk while you have with your, with, your, uh, with your participants while you're on the road, right? Secure your stuff, take care of your stuff. If you, if you're not, if you don't wanna lose it, don't bring it, stuff like that. Um, uh, just that normal, almost parent talk. Class A participants will be allowed access to the locker room only during the Class A competition. Um, and the locker rooms will close 25 minutes following that event. So get your stuff, get in, get your stuff and get out of there. So, um, and then, then another aspect of just being a good steward of our facilities that we've been, we've been so graciously been able to, to use is uh, leave it better than we found it. Right. Uh, we want the U of M to continue to want us there. Uh, we want our, our meet to be a first class event. And so uh, drop that message to your to your student athletes. Let's let, let's make sure we leave the facilities better than we found it. All right. Coaches changing room. Uh, the coaches may use the restroom changing room that's in that dry corridor that goes between the aquatic center and the uh, the old U of M rec. I think it was Cook Hall. I think it was what it was when I was a student at the U of M. Uh, but so when you come in that north entry there, when you go to your check-in, uh, for any coaches that don't know our ADs that need to relay this, uh, right behind the check-in table, like behind your back as you're at the check-in table, is a coded door that will get you access into, the, um, into that corridor. And there is um, a changing rooms in there for coaches. Um, do not leave any clothing or valuables in there. Those are strictly changing rooms. Um, and you'll be responsible for securing your own valuables. Uh, for that, uh, please do not use the U of M rec sports men's or women's locker room that are further down that hall. And I, again, many of you are already familiar with this. If there's any questions, come seek myself out or Chris Arseth or, or Linda. Um, the, you, we'll get the code from the U of M. I just saw that pop up, so I'll address it now. We'll get it from the U of M. We'll make sure our past gate folks have it. All right. Um, all right, moving forward. Um, once you're in the event, we've got everything, everyone placed, you've got your bleachers, you've got your seating area, you got all that stuff going. Uh, inside, on deck here, the meat management suite is uh, the north side of the pool deck. It will be labeled with, I believe we'll have a pink sign again, but it's right there, um, kind of where the control center is for the University of Minnesota, how they run their uh, scoreboard and announcing and all those aspects. So um, this says restricted to authorized personnel. I'll just keep this really, really simple. If you're not invited or if there's not an emergency circumstance that in, in, you know, involves you coming in there to get someone for aid, uh, there's really no business to be in there. So we want to stay out of the U of M and the tournament staff's way, um, again, unless it's in an emergency or if you're invited in there to talk through an issue or something that we're working on, uh, there's really no reason that anyone should be in there. But that's where it's located in case you need to get someone's attention. Moving. All right, race ready area, just to the right of where you would enter into those headquarters that uh, no one's supposed to be at unless there's an emergency. Uh, you've got your race ready area there, uh, and there will be a, what do we call Jane, Chris? Uh, what, uh, deck captain, I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm blanking on. Floor director, floor director. Yes, floor director, she's the general, she runs everything, all right? Um, 
So the participants in each swim event must report to the floor director. It's sitting right there. I didn't even, I should have just read my own freaking slide, guys. All right. Uh, anyway, so J Jane Luke will, will be the floor director. Uh, you'll report to that race ready area uh, that's beneath, beneath seating sections six and seven on the north side of the pool deck. Uh, the floor director will line up each contestant according to their lane, lane assignment, and the meet announcer will, will introduce each participant. Uh, coaches are not allowed in this area. Coaches are not allowed in this area. I'll repeat it for a third time. Coaches aren't allowed in the race ready area. I see it a lot during girls' meet. All right, go ahead. All right, uniforms and prohibited items. We're not going to go through everything on this, uh, but the one thing I will note is that swim caps uh, may include the competitor's name, school name, or abbreviation, and or a school approved nick nickname, mascot, or logo. Um, any other information such as state meet or any you know, special um, kind of commemorative or memorial type things, unless approved, they are, they are prohibited, okay? Um, and then we've got our list of prohibited items down there as well. All right, let's go ahead, Marissa. All right, so coaches, we're going to get into relays here. We've got a couple slides dealing with relays. Chris, if you want to add two cents in, you feel free to, but I'm going to, I'm going to move through here and, and touch on the, the big points on our relay designation. So coaches are re required to designate their relay team members each day. I want to, I want to um, emphasize each day of the meet to the MSHSL relays at gmail.com. All right. Each day those have to be submitted. Go ahead, Marissa. All right, so relay designation for prelims. Um, the uh, relay designations for emails must be relayed, submit, excuse me, submitted 30 minutes before the start of the prelims on Friday. At this time, the medley relay is officially designated. All emails for relays will be confirmed with an email response. That's a big one, all right? Um, they will be confirmed. If you do not get a confirmation email after submitting your relay, check with one of the staff, come find myself, Chris, any of the other tournament staff, knock on the window, get, get Linda's attention to come out and chat with you. If you have not received a response that we have confirmed entry of your relay, right? And this isn't normally a big deal, but we, I have in my one swimming and diving meet I have ran, I have gotten, had an issue, one issue with that. And I want to make sure that no one else has any issues with that. If you don't get a confirmation that you've submitted and we've received your relay, check on that. Check on it, please. Go ahead to the next one. All right. So changes may be made for freestyle relays uh, via email according to the following schedule. 200 free uh, will be immediately after the completion of the first heat of the 500, and the 400 free will be immediately after the completion of the first heat of the breaststroke. Go ahead, Marissa. All right. And so the, uh, for the finals, the relay teams advancing the Constellation and Championship finals, coaches will submit the email with the relay members for each of the participating relay. Again, different day, still needs to happen. Still needs to happen for finals. I don't care if the team doesn't change. If no changes are made to your relay team between prelims and finals, that email confirmation of your relay uh, must still be sent in, and you will get a confirmation. Okay. Um, same schedule as, as we talked about, uh, 200 free will be after the first heat of five, um, and the 400 relay will be immediately after the first heat of the 100 brush stroke. Chris, do you have anything you want to throw in there on relays or did I beat a dead horse with this? No, no. I think you, you handled it really well. Okay. So, um, I want to bring, bring you in here, Chris, for a second and, uh, and possibly Jim Marshall as well, if he's still on the call and just talk a little bit about the relay takeoff pad. Sure. Um, Jim, are you, are, Jim, are you here? I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'll let you talk about the schematics and the timing of it, but we are using, I'll just kind of touch your lightly on it. We are using relay takeoff pads as we have in the past to, um, enhance the, um, the, the meet and, and to uh, provide the best services with the equipment that we have for the athletes to make sure that uh, we're providing uh, a fair level playing field for everybody. Um, Jim can touch upon uh, the, the uh, dual confirmation and stuff like that. So I'll turn it over to Jim here really quick. Um, yes, as Chris said, we do use relay takeoff pads. We follow the guidelines as outlined in the NFHS rule book regards to using relay takeoff pads. In other words, if I don't get a notice 
that there a jump has occurred. In other words, it hasn't been reported. The relay takeoff pad has indicated that everything is good. Then in all, there will be no jump considered unless it's a huge jump. I mean, and if it's a huge jump and then it's an indication that the pad has malfunctioned. But I mean, if we're seeing a jump from the side of the pool and everybody else is seeing it where the swimmer is at the, at the uh, backstroke flag and the swimmer is taken off from the block, that's pretty evident. And if the relay takeoff pad does not indicate that, then we know there's a, a malfunction of the relay takeoff pad. We follow those guidelines pretty strictly. And uh, so far it's worked out extremely well. We've had no problems with it at all. So um, we'll continue to go along those lines. Perfect. Thanks, Jim and Chris. I appreciate that. Um, we move forward here, Marissa. So awards, we get to our finals day. Um, uh, uh, medals will be presented immediately after each event uh, to the top eight finishers. Um, the team trophies will be awarded to first and second and third place teams at the conclusion of each meet. So um, essentially, if we have the, the area between the dive well and our pool is for anyone who has not been there before, there's, an, there's, an, there's a large area between the dive well and the pool. That's where the awards will be presented. Um, awards recipients are required to wear uh, school approved warm up that reflect well of the swimming and diving, reflect well of swimming and diving during the award ceremony. So basically, no crazy hats, no stuffed animals, or onesies. I think I've seen onesies at swim meets and things like that. Uh, have your warm up jackets on. Uh, have your kids looking awesome and presentable so they represent your community in the best way possible. Um, only the award winners will be allowed to take part in the award ceremony. Substitutes are not allowed. Uh, please note that coaches and team members are not allowed in the awards area. So again, in that area between the dive well and the, the racing pool, um, we are trying to do our best to get good photos for the, the communities. We're trying to get good photos of the for um, for different things along the MSHSL, and and then people from the bleachers are also trying to get a good viewpoint. So we don't allow coaches um, or anyone that's on the deck that um, that shouldn't be uh, in front of those those award recipients as they're being recognized. So just note that. Um, so I'll talk about that. Uh, a league pr provided photographer will take pictures, uh, photos for purchase after the event, and those will all be on the MSHSL's uh, smug mug account that uh, is accessible on the site. Okay. So parking. Uh, I talked a little bit about the north and the south entrances um, at the U of M. Um, we are not the only thing going on at the U of M. All right. So plan ahead and allow some extra time uh, when traveling to and around the University of Minnesota's campus. Uh, parking is available in the ramps and the lots all over the East Bank there. Um, and I would say that the the two best ramps for us are that Washington Street ramp, which goes and takes you into the south entrance. So if you're an AD or administrative rep or something like that, that Washington Avenue ramp that you would come in on Washington Avenue uh, and exit, you would exit the north side of the ramp and walk into the south side of the aquatic center is, is one of the closest. And then also the university ramp on the north side of the aquatic center um, is will will drop you into the, uh, the aquatic center on the, the north side there. So um, the 4th Street ramp is also available for parking and lot 37 on 5th Street, that's a couple blocks away from the aquatic center. That 4th Street ramp is the one that's up a little bit closer towards 35W, um, kind of by Williams Arena and Mariucci and stuff like that. It's more used for that, but in the event that there is uh, some uh, you know tight, tight uh, spaces because of other events, that's also available. I saw Linda's camera popped on. Did you want to say something about our parking? Yeah, I guess I just want to make sure everybody understands that on Friday and Saturday, nearly every gopher sporting event is happening on campus. So um, it will be incredibly busy on campus Friday and Saturday. So I just, I would really encourage you to allow for extra time for team travel tell your fans to allow extra time for travel. I would encourage people to use um, Oak Street or Washington versus University or 4th Street um, because all of the ramps, you know, closely adjacent to the Aquatic Center will be very, very busy on Friday, Saturday. Good deal. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. 
Um, for any ADs or coaches uh, looking to put faces with names, that's the awesome Katie Davis back there in the back of that waving. And then Linda McKee, those are our two uh, contacts at the University of Minnesota that, uh, that look out for us. And so um, if for whatever reason you can't see uh, Chris Arseth or myself or, or Marissa, you can always find one of them. Don't get Katie though. Katie might, Katie might be running around taking care of other things, but uh, Linda or myself, we'll, we'll take care of <laughs> All right, let's go ahead, Marissa. All right, so media interviews. Um, real quick, I'm going to, and, and Laura, if, if there's anything that you'd like to add on this one, feel free to hop in, but I'm going to take some of the things that Tim would normally talk about. Um, if, if there are any approved media um, that, uh, that are going to be here, the two starred areas um, are, are what we have set aside for interviews. So that's one right near the race ready area, and then up near the top of the photo, uh, is near the, I think it's the training room that's right there. Is that the training room there, Linda? Give me a nod or something. The training room, that top star. Yep. Okay, cool. So those are, those are the two areas and if there, where you can do interviews if requested. And then we will have a, a media liaison directing any traffic there. Um, there's also a media workroom for any, um, you know, anyone that needs to come in and write or, or do things, uh, that's there as well. And we've got some stuff there. So. Go ahead, Marissa. All right, so spectator resources. So um, I would say the biggest thing on our on the public swimming and diving page under the state tournament information, there's a spectator guide there that there's a huge red arrow pointing to, right? This spectator guide is essentially a printable sheet that you can share with your community, um, share with any fans or, or any people that are interested in coming uh, or even maybe just post. Um, and within that, it's kind of a one-stop shop for directions, parking, venue, tickets, all of the above. And so um, utilize this. And, and this was essentially created for you as ADs to be able to create some efficiency and sharing out information um, with all of the craziness of the different events that you've got going on. You can utilize the spectator guide to share information uh, without having to come up drafting emails and getting people in your support staff in your office to get this going. So Laura, anything else on the spectator resources or that, that aspect of the state tournament information? No, just make sure you direct your community to that boys swimming and diving page that's where they're going to find a number of resources to help them plan their trip to the tournament. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Laura. Let's go ahead and move. So state tournament apparel. So we've got on-site purchase, um, purchase early for best selection. Uh, in, in the main lobby of the aquatic center, the south um, kind of concessions area, like it's a built-in booth thing. That's where they will be at. Many of you are here for the girls tournament. They'll be in the same location there, signature concepts. Uh, you've got the online link there to purchase apparel. Um, it can be viewed there, but if the kids want it, I'm gonna recommend that you tell them to purchase it on site. Uh, if it is ordered, it won't be shipped and they won't receive it before the, the, uh, the event happens this weekend. So uh, that's, I, I, I personally think that that online option is really there as a, you know, as kind of a backup if they don't have a size that you want or something like that. And I will tell you right now, Signature Concepts has done a great job of make, they call it chasing product, but, but essentially they make sure that they have everything there for the, for the entirety of a tournament. So we've only ran out of sizes, maybe one or two tournaments in the last two seasons. And any of those ones we've been able to basically reconcile by getting uh, the individual ordered up online and getting it shipped directly to them. Uh, they are cashless only. Uh, so know that and let your let your communities know that. Okay. And then um, there we've got some samples of, of what we got for boys swim as far as the t shirt and the hoodie there. Um, we're excited to work with signature they do an ex they do a exclusive design to each individual tournament every year so it's it's uh, excuse me every season for every every tournament and uh, they're doing a good job of, of making sure that all of the the individual programs kind of have their own unique hit for the for the uh, for the season which is nice so um, it's been a good addition to us and and we've gotten great feedback from the kids so they'll be there and available and if there's any questions or needs on that feel free to reach out to me okay all right, streaming here. So um, NSPN, uh, which was formerly Prep Spotlight, our school space media, uh, will be streaming the event and uh, we will have scoring for that uh, and everything will be, excuse me, posted. Uh, it is $9.99 for a month, monthly subscription for that. 
and you would utilize the mspn.tv slash MSHSL site and you'd get access to that. Laura, anything else on the MSPN front? I think that pretty much covers it. All right, our online program, starting to wrap up here, gang. Our online program um, is um, a, a viewable, we don't have paper ones there. So it's a view print or bookmark type thing and have on your phone. Um, and um, we've gotten good responses out of that. Uh, it's very accessible with everyone's smartphone. And um, that is right on the MSHSL dot org site and that would be under the tournament resources that we i showed earlier where that spectator guide was at and i think it can be um also up top through about i think there's a uh, um there is a, a link through that as well but really that that state tournament boy swimming and diving page is the best place to go for the spectator guide and for the uh program if I can jump in for just a second, Phil. Um, we remember from boy from girls swimming this fall that on day two, folks want an updated um, program or list of heat and lane assignments. On that boys swim and dive page, there is a button that says results. That is where heat and lane assignments are posted right now. That's also where we update those for day two. So again, in the swimming world, a, a program is really only good for, for day one, then people want an updated piece for day two. Those get put under that results button on the main page. Perfect, thank you, Laura. Okay, let's go ahead in here and, and, and kind of wind things down. I told, every, I told everyone the goal was to keep it under an hour so that uh, it, would, it wouldn't impede too much on your days uh, over this lunch. Um, so our tournament management team, as I introduced most of these folks before, Chris Arseth uh, is our tournament manager, Jim Marshall, uh, officials, uh, John Brandt is, uh, works with the University of Minnesota with our ticketing, uh, all of our U of M staff, which uh, Katie Davis and Linda, excuse me, Katie Davis and Linda McKee are there still on the call, myself, Marissa, and then uh, Laura, I have to believe, will probably find her way some find her way to the University of Minnesota to help us in some capacity as well. So, if there are any issues or questions or needs on site, uh, we are the folks that you can come to. And obviously, if there's anything that we can address for you before we get over to the University of Minnesota, um, we'll be there Wednesday. You will be there Thursday. Um, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. So, um, with that being said, I want to emphasize two more things here, real quick. Is one. This is going to be posted, the slides and the video recorded. So if your coach was not on here or your coach and your AD was not on here, to avoid confusion, please get into this. It will be accessible on the dashboard. So those are the two things. Uh, this slideshow will be present, uh, will be posted along with the recording of it, which again, I tried to stay as close to the slides as possible so you won't have to like scroll through a video presentation, okay? You can be able to get some good answers off of the slides alone. Um, and then secondly, um, it will be posted right after the meeting. All right. Um, and then, and then lastly here, uh, if, if you don't have any specific questions and you'd like to, uh, jet, feel free to head out at this time. Uh, if you do have any specific questions, I've asked Laura and the U of M staff and a few of our other tournament management team to stay and hang around and talk. Um, so with that being said, I want to say thanks for taking the hour or the 52 minutes really 51 because we started at 1201. Uh, but thank you for taking the 51 minutes and hanging out with us here. I'm hoping that that we can put together a solid meet and a solid experience for our student athletes uh, and, our, and our communities. Um, and then we answered the majority of your questions uh, so that we can create some clarity going into Thursday uh, when we get after it. So um, if you have any questions, please stay. Uh, I'm excited to, to talk with you about it. If you don't, uh, and something pops up later, send us an email or review that participation guide first, review the site first, and then reach out if you didn't get your answer on that. Um, we appreciate all of you being here. Have a great afternoon, and we'll just pause for a second and let everyone clear out that wants to get going. All right, have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bill. Hey, cool. What's up? Thank you. All right, Laura, Marissa, let's, uh, let's start to comb through the chat and make sure that we've got everything answered there. And then we'll just stay on here. So, and Jim Campbell, Marshall, good to Jim, see Jim Marshall, there is a question on the chat right now. If you're still on here, Jim. He is. All right. Can you see that in the chat, Jim? You want to answer that question from the rules? 
standpoint. I don't see it in the chat, Chris. Which, which one do you got, Chris? I'll read it. I'll read okay, it. Okay. Do all right. Do do relay do relay members need to have the exact same cap? Can they be team caps but different colored from each other? Yes, they can be team caps with different colors. They just have to adhere to what is required on the cap. Uh, but they can one can be black, one can be white, one can be pink, and one can be yellow. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Yep. And then uh yes, you have three relay or three tickets per athlete that was stated on the ticket slide. Someone asked well, that well, question. So. If a team has no relays, they are allowed three tickets per athlete, correct. Yep. Correct. Yep. If you've got an individual or you've got a, a diver, it'll be three tickets per athlete. All right, let's roll. No, 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 you do not. Your your tickets, you once you get the codes, you are able to purchase your tickets that following day. That's all in the in the slides. You do it is yep. not like the old style of going up to the ticket booth and purchasing tickets. I didn't see that one. That was Chris. that was uh Nick Hansen. Um, okay. yeah. Yep. So how, how it works, gang, is after this after this video is done, um, there's going to be an email that goes to each athletic director, or activities director, and within that email is going to be a, a certain number of codes. Marissa, could you go back to that slide too for me, please? I want to say it was slide 11. Yep. Um, so what it, what it looks like, gang, is you're going to get an email, and within that email, there are, if you're, again, I'll use Creed and Durham Hall. Um, I had one relay team, that means I get 15 tickets. So I've got 15 codes in there. And those, and those codes can be used to purchase using the protocol or the process, excuse me, that, uh, that Nick laid out from hometown, which again, is, in, is included in, the, in the, the slides here. It's also included in the, I believe, participation guide as far as the details on ticketing, okay? So there's no on-site sales, there's no old school wheel call, um, the, the, all of that process has now moved into an online process, which is, is, is the only thing I will say that is tough is that you have to have each individual transaction. But other than that, it has really streamlined the process for the spectator, the University of Minnesota, us, everyone. And so it, it has been a positive addition. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, if you're curious about uh, staying around to watch your divers, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, that has always been uh, something that that we allow. Yes, there are breaks. If you if you look on the schedule that is listed on the high school league webpage, it lists the breaks at the very bottom. And and one comment about that, Chris, we adhere to those breaks very very well. In other words, if it's five minutes, you're going to get five minutes probably a little bit more than five minutes, uh, but we adhere to those very carefully. And that is so. that is only on prelims. On finals, yeah. obviously, we have the awards in between each event, so those breaks are not needed. That's correct. Um, just one thing, everybody that's still on here, I, I, it looks like we got about 37 people on here. Please, please look at the coach's clipboard and look through all the information in this slide, if you or this this PowerPoint. If you have not done that, you can feel free to email either myself, Phil, um, and we can get your question answered. But a lot of these questions that are popping up now are yeah. really on the dashboard and are located in this PowerPoint that we just went through, or in the participation guide. Yeah. Yep. Good deal. All right. Is there anything that we haven't caught or anything in there? Because Marissa, Laurel, you guys want to throw eyes on this one more time before we sign off here? I told everyone would be done at one. So we're going to respect people's time that are staying just to not miss anything. Any breaks in prelims? Got that. Got that. Chris, are you all good? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, one, one last final question here. If we don't have any kids swimming in finals, okay. can they be on deck? Um, we we have allowed that in the past. So if you're if you do not qualify, however, or uh, being from Grand Rapids, I don't know if your athletic director is going to want you to stay another day in town. That's entirely up to you. <laughs> and we'll be good with it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Laura, anything from the MSHSL side? I think she had to hop. May have had to hop off here. 
are still there. But okay, cool. Jim, you all good on the official side? We're good, Phil. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, gang. Um, thank you for spending some time here with us today. Uh, again, this stuff has been this stuff is up on the on the coach's clipboard. Or excuse me, the dashboard. I'll use the right language now. Uh, it's up on the dashboard. Utilize these resources. Tap into it. If you can't get your answer from those, then reach out to us with an email or a call, and we'll make sure you're squared away. Looking forward to having a great meet this weekend and um, and seeing who's the best of the best. Talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, Marissa, you can stop recording.